telepathic transmission teachings from the angelic realm ascended masters christine preston messenger four celestial sources archangels ascended masters and andrew the ascended twin flame Christine Preston is a messenger in service for the Great White Brotherhood. Christine communicates through telepathic communication. Christine daily communicates with Archangel Michael, Andre her ascended twin flame, and other celestial beings. Andre is Christine's ascended twin flame. Christine was related to Andre, and they were cousins in this lifetime. He passed away in 1972. When Andre was alive he taught Christine theosophy. Christine was a teenager at the time. Andre ascended in 2012 and now is Christina Guardian. Andre incarnated amongst the Andromedans. Introduction by Christine Preston. Telepathic teachings from the angelic realm. Ascended masters and amazing insights and messages. In my opinion, the ability for telepathic communication with the higher realms made its appearance for me in 2014 because I had kept a routine of invocation called decrees for three decades. I have recorded the dictations and most of the communications I have received in writing, word for word, over a period of nine years. Those that were not related to personal matters were published on videos by Matt McElroy from December 2015, and many other channels, including my own channel Ascension more recently. The prophecies I received week after week, mainly from Archangel Michael, in relation to the election of President Trump, from February 2016, attracted a group of followers to my Facebook page, especially as they came true. Archangel Michael revealed he is and was the only person with the ability, and the means, to oppose the establishment, and that his presidency was the result of an intervention decided at high level, as well as part of the divine plan. I have composed decrees according to the pattern of those given in the decree book published by the Summit Lighthouse, the headquarters of which are in Montana, USA. They are in line with the science of the spoken word revealed by the Ascended Masters and the Archangels by dictation or telepathic communication. When I started experiencing the ability to receive telepathic communication, one of the first things that Archangel Michael pointed out to me is that the Armageddon of the Psyche was not over, despite misleading messages generated by the New Age movement in and around 2012. The messenger E.C. Prophet had continued in her role as spiritual leader but passed away in the 2000s after retiring in 1999. I was in research for a PhD at Swansea University until 2007 and only started looking for other messengers, who may have had the ability to receive channel information from the higher realms, after my biography for L.A. Waddle was published by Sussex Academic Press, and this was in 2009. I never expected I would be able to gain that ability myself. But this happened in 2014, it was during that year that I noticed I was able to receive communication from the beings I was decreeing to, in particular Archangel Michael, my twin flame and the Master Jesus, but also Mother Mary, Archangel Uriel and Ashtar Command and many more. After some training, and some drama, to understand how impostures work, for more than a year, I was informed I had been coached to serve as a messenger for the Great White Brotherhood in 2015. I had recorded my communication in handwriting. The underlying principle of decreeing is that we are holy grails for the light of God and integration of higher consciousness that the Logos, or Word, can impart to us. These new decrees, calls or prayers, are in the form of verses that rhyme and are designed to be recited loud in the power of the spoken word, as taught by the Summit Lighthouse, to obtain solutions from the Archangels and Ascended Masters to personal, as well as worldwide problems. 
Although the latter appear different in their manifestation, their cause is basically identical today as decades ago and since the messenger E.C. Prophet passed away. These decrees mainly invoke the intervention of the Archangels, Chuhans and Elohim of the Blue Ray for protection and the will of God to manifest in our lives. The fourth ray for alignment of our four lower bodies, purity, and our ascension. The fifth ray of emerald for truth, healing, consecration and supply. The sixth purple and gold ray of ministration and service of the Master Jesus and Archangel Uriel for the removal of evil and transformation of the world into a better one, as well as enlightenment and illumination, and the seventh ray and violet flame for the transmutation of all that is negative for freedom and the manifestation of a golden age, as well as the raising of the material plane to the next level upon the ladder of the dimensions, as the Master Jesus said on the 5th of November, 2015. I am Christ, the consciousness of higher realms that you are going to experience as you raise yourselves in the process of ascension. I, in the person of the Kumars and other higher beings, came up with a plan of ascension of raising the material plane of the galaxy to a level that would be beyond the reach of the corrupt ones. A cousin of mine, with whom I felt closer than my own parents, who died in 1972, and according to Archangel Michael he had spent some time in the mystery schools of the etheric realm before he ascended in 2012, he was assigned to be my guardian and advisor. I learned from the same authority that he is my twin flame, and was Isaac, son of Abraham, James, brother of Jesus, as well as Cretian de Troyes, who wrote Arthurian legend stories in the 12th century, in previous incarnations. I refer to him as my ascended twin flame Andre. As twin flames are to start being reunited, and because it is faster than the method of incarnation, he informed me in his first communication in 2015, that for a project of reunion, he could create a body and incarnate among the galactic beings called Andromedans and be self-born into adult stage, a method that was used by the initiators who instructed the Atlanteans in what the Bible calls the Old World. This is the Antediluvian or Atlantean era. The Andromedans exist upon a higher dimension than ours. Like the Archangels, who really are Qumras and other beings whose origin is the constellation of Sirius, who came via the higher dimensions of the star Venus, they are celestial, and have been chosen as ambassadors to openly walk among us, along with some Pleiadians and other intergalactic beings. My ATF Andre said. It would be a descent for me in a body of similar nature to yours at that time, as you will have been transfigured a little at a time. At this point we are at, here upon the higher planes, we are capable of creating a form, and to inhabit it. On the 21st of March, 2021, Andre stated, I am galactic now, having taken incarnation, as you know, among the Andromedans, but in spirit I am human and I look human in form, as they also do. There is evidence of this and about their coming soon. I have been working on something to permit a high return among mankind. I have been chosen for this because of my connection with Archangel Michael, and at the same time, my circumstances in body among the Andromedans, who have permission to appear and assist for the shift to the fifth dimension in physicality or density, and because of my memory as a human being, so I am an ambassador in addition to being qualified in the sciences and medical subjects that I have learned after passing away and all the technological subjects and fields related to laws, and much more. Andre stated on the 20th of November, 2015. I have come to give you that faith which is the peace of the heart when you have an understanding with the third eye vision, that of mighty Cyclopea, a Helohim, according to Summit Lighthouse teachings, who comes with the emerald vibration of healing and therefore Archangel Raphael, as well as the illumination of Archangel Uriel. And this is also brought to your attention by Archangel Gabriel who announces the path of the ascension and the events that are unfolding. 
Archangel Michael is with you for your protection and the victory of the light that brings the freedom of Saint Germain, together with his violet flame, to mankind. It is the freedom that the whole of the material world is going to experience. Continue placing one step after another till the finishing line and you are very close to it. All of heaven is watching you and they are beside themselves with trepidation because the light workers are a great light to behold. At the same time, there is suffering upon the world and know that your prayers are always taken to the highest orders of heaven to obtain dispensations for the archangels to enter into action on your behalf. We are around you constantly. We conclude this message with an intense irradiation of love and light to you all. My ascended twin flame gave me a celestial letter on what he called the path of love, on the 18th of October, 2016, saying it is about everyone's path of discovery of the self, because we are extensions of beings of love and light sent to earth, by incarnation, in the human veils of the third dimension, and that negative entities have taken advantage of our vulnerabilities, as well as plotted to create situations to bring our paths to a standstill, or disaster. Some among you, dear light workers, were born decades ago when the collective was much less awakened than today, and much less alerted to the truths that have been suppressed. Relationships were broken, money and property were lost, and people were influenced in their ideologies, as well as their emotions, so everything started falling apart, and those satanic forces had an earth-shattering goal of destruction for those workers of the light, even if the latter were not aware of their spiritual nature. The angels shielded these souls and prevented actual intrusion from these negative forces into their aura, and they mended the situations as they could as it is not permitted to them to go against human free will. The dark forces however created havoc in relationships that were unequally yoked, such as for instance, a karmic relationship between a light bearer and a person of a third dimensional materialistic mentality more susceptible to the dark influence seeking self-gratification rather than the fulfillment of a romantic dream. The path of love, or of a sacred romantic relationship, relates to an ageless search life after life for the reunion of twin flames which is not always possible physically, as in some cases one half is in incarnation and the other half, the twin flame, stands upon the shores of that life beyond the waters that separate life from death. It is sometime planned that way so that the ascended twin flame pulls up the other one upon the path of ascension. One descends to carry out a mission and the other remains up in heaven, or in the higher dimensions, in an etheric form, to ensure the return of the loved one and to ensure victory is gained in the tasks appointed. In some case the twin flame can overshadow a soulmate in a relationship such as a marital situation. God is mother and father. All beings have a dual polarity corresponding to this image. Electricity also does, so ancient beings such as the archangels are dual in polarity in a high level of expression. The mother and father aspects in them are divine complements. They do not switch over, just as the mother of the universe remains the world mother forever, and the father remains father. Twin flames don't have a gender but have consolidated in a polarity that is expressed in physicality. They are the components of a being, or soul, created in the image of the Divine Mother and Father, as their higher selves also were. Twin flames were created in the Great Central Sun and were sent out to this galaxy. Then later, they incarnated into etheric vehicles corresponding to their polarities where they experienced physicality. In the beginning, far back in time, this was for the experience of a beautiful existence incorporating an expression of love in their reunion in these vehicles, but, as you know, there was interference, galactic battles and the fall into the third dimension was experienced. However, millions of years later, we find ourselves about to fulfill the ancient prophecy of restoring physicality as it was intended to be, and that is upon the path of love and upon a higher dimension. What has been experienced in the third dimension was never intended to be. You will be restored, dear friends, to that state of happiness with the creation of the golden age of Saint Germain, although that will just be the beginning of this restoration. 
all that was never intended to be, all these timelines, will be erased. There will be victory and life will be once again joyful. Namaste everyone. In Alice Bailey's works, the divine hierarchy is defined as 12 hierarchies of spiritual beings embodying intelligence and wisdom, who direct and control life in the solar system from their inner plane of existence. These beings of light are also referred to as Lords of the Flame. I now know that they started directing the incarnation of souls after the world was recreated by Lord Sanat Kumra, perhaps 18 million years ago, the date provided by H.P. Blavatsky. The Summit Lighthouse has the story that he volunteered for this because Earth was going to be destroyed, but it has become clear that during the Jurassic era it existed as Tiamat and was terraformed. Archangel is a Western term and I have been told that the Eastern equivalent is Kumra. Sanat Kumra is known in Buddhism as Sanam Kumra. In the dictation original physicality was created on the 7th dimension, received on the 7th of September, 2015, and that indicates the world increasingly solidified itself by involution, Archangel Michael states. I am Archangel Michael, the defender of the woman clothed with the sun and her man-child. She represents the collective souls of mankind in the garment of ascension, and the child that is being born is its expression in physicality its manifestation on earth, as it is in heaven. The Lord Michael, that I am, is known as a prince of the Church of Jesus Christ and chief commander of the heavenly hosts who guard souls, vanquish sinister forces and rebel spirits. I am sent to be servant in the house of the Divine King. Here the Church of Jesus Christ means the collective of mankind at soul level. The woman in heaven that is clothed with the sun in the book of Revelation, 1220, is not Mary, as interpreted by the Catholic Church, as the latter is ascended and does not need protection. She is mankind in the labor of gaining discernment and giving birth to higher consciousness. The child, man-child in early versions of the Bible, represents the higher consciousness that the dragon of control is ready to devour. The woman is depicted as wearing the solar garment of ascension weaved of the light mankind has magnetized, that has also been allegorically referred to as a wedding garment. To form the solar body, one must purify one's thoughts and feelings. It will then act as a magnet that will transmute the veil, a term for the densities accumulated in the aura as a result of the misuse of the light, or of God's energies. Archangel Michael declared on the 29th of April, 2016, that he is Christus. I am Christos, the angelic one. There is another name for me. It is indeed Melchizedek. The order of Melchizedek is cosmic, and so is my order comprised of many legions of angels. We answer to the orders of the Blue Lodge, the Higher Council of Orion, spelled with a Y not Orion spelled with an I. It is situated upon the highest of all realms, directly from or under the Godhead. The fact that there is another name for Archangel Michael and that it is Melchizedek is hinted at by Chazavirms in his book The Dead Sea Scrolls. Christus is the universal Christ, or Logos, the Greek term for the word, the one that was in the beginning and created the world. Archangel Michael is the great emissary, an emanation of this cosmic Christus. He has told me that the archangels were involved with the creation of man and they do not have wings. These wings are the result of an ancient pictographic system of writing. If an archangel is the higher self of a soul in incarnation, they use the code of being its father or mother, allegorically, depending whether the person is male or female because the gender either reflects the masculine or feminine nature of the archangel that corresponds to either Alpha or Omega, the father-mother God's duality in divinity. Christ's referring to his Father in heaven is in relation to that. A higher self is the inner reality of a soul, and the Christ self is the blueprint upon the etheric plane for manifestation. The archangels are consolidated in the polarity that reflects that of either the Father or Mother God. Hence if you are male, your higher self is in the polarity of divinity that reflects the divine masculine, and if you are female, your higher self is the feminine complement of an archangel and reflects the divine mother. This concept is totally unknown and revealed to me in the process of interaction in the realm of telepathic communication. 
mankind is destined to develop this ability. When this happens people will have their own source of enlightenment and will not have to rely on an external source. As mentioned in the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus, our celestial counterpart, or higher self, remains upon the higher dimension while the soul is in incarnation. The divine hierarchy in charge of our system of worlds referred to as the Great White Brotherhood is comprised of Jehans of the Rays, and Ascended Masters whose higher self can also be an Archangel. Presiding at Shambhala and having completed their evolution, they work through their disciples and in the world, and remain with humanity in order to facilitate its spiritual progress. The lifespan of their bodies is almost infinite. Avatars, Redeemers, Messiahs, or enlightened beings, such as the Lord Buddha, Krishna, Confucius, Vishnu and the Master Jesus, to name but a few, have been sent at appointed times to teach mankind to manifest the etheric blueprint on Earth. Our present problems and short lifetimes can be traced to the Atlantean drama of failed transition into higher consciousness, the result of which would be the manifestation of a golden age and the fifth kingdom. The fifth kingdom is a post-human kingdom attained by discernment as well as a transformation of the lower self resulting from the conquest of the human nature, which involves an integration of divine rays. The human kingdom is the fourth, the animal one is the third, and the vegetal and mineral ones respectively are the second and first kingdom. The concept of the fifth kingdom was released through Alice Bailey in a treatise on cosmic fire between 1919 and 49 but is related to the work necessary to build the Antikharana as known in the Eastern tradition. Atlanteans ready for the initiation were endowed with higher knowledge by divine instructors who descended from the etheric plane of existence, and are referred to as the sons of God in Genesis 6. However, the incarnation of dark entities in connection with the Red Dragon of Revelation, or Satan, in or as some of the initiator's offspring, called Nephilim in Genesis 6, led some souls to follow the path of darkness, with the result that two parties were arrayed against each other, a misuse of power and devastating wars that culminated with the downfall of the Atlantean civilization. A great many Christians have adopted the incorrect interpretation that the sons of God, being Har Elohim, were Nephilim or fallen that is central to the fallen angel theory. This is because the term Nephilim is in the same sentence. However, it is essential to emphasize that only the offspring of these beings called the sons of God, created corruption in the ancient world. Only the progeny, not these initiators of the Atlanteans, are responsible for the corruption of the ancient world. These sons of God committed no violation of the divine law by intermarrying with Atlantean women, as it was by this intervention that the creation of the fifth root race was made possible. It must be stressed that only a few, those represented by Cain in Genesis, were incarnations of the satanic red dragon mentioned in the book of Revelation. This is explained in chapter 6 of my work Beyond the Veil of the Lost Holy Grail as well as in my groundbreaking exegesis available on video by Channel Ascension Christine Preston, as sons of godlike Adam initiators with an angelic nature. In the work by John of Patmos, as well as the Book of Enoch, you will find indication that the Nephilim spirits were bound by Archangel Michael and retained in bottomless pits for a certain season or time, this being for the objective of allowing mankind to flourish again after the flood, without satanic interference or deception. My work unveils a lot of other truths to eradicate erroneous biblical interpretations. The Master Jesus has confirmed the story told by the Summit Lighthouse about Archangel Michael's reasons for fashioning his sword of blue flame, in a dictation he gave me in 2015. He had already foreseen in the days of the Lemurian era that preceded the creation of the Atlantean Empire, that these incarnations would have a nefarious effect, hence he warned the priests of the Lemurian temples. Referring to a dictation received from Archangel Michael by a messenger by the name of Geraldine Innocent, in 1953, the Master Jesus said to me on the 22nd of December, 2015, that the messenger E.C. Prophet was right in her observation that the incarnation of satanic beings is noted in Genesis. He said, 
The souls of the other system were foreseen by Archangel Michael as a threat when they were allowed to incarnate upon Earth, and they were represented as Cain indeed in Genesis. The forbidden tree of knowledge was the intellectual arguments of the dark forces that caused the downfall of the Atlantean civilization, and in the first place the loss of the Golden Age of Lemuria. That is why, from the point of view of the forces of the light, or of the spiritual hierarchy, the intellectual knowledge that represented an interference for the ascension was called forbidden. It caused souls to descend into the realm of the lower third dimension. I will give you more information to clarify some details later. The project of ascension had to be aborted before the flood or Atlantean cataclysms, and the spectrum of consciousness was reduced for mankind to avoid the appearance of psychic powers in a premature way in the reset after the flood, or after the Atlantean cataclysms, that according to Plato, occurred in 9564 BC, and mankind's longevity was shortened. The Master Jesus said that the conquest of the human nature was left out of the doctrine of sacrifice that the Church of Rome introduced at the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD with the idea that a Son of God, who is unique, died to redeem the sins of mankind. The Master has revealed mortality as being due to a mindset composed of false perceptions and misinterpretations as well as an acceptance of this condition. This can be attributed to the established force of control that deified Christ, as well as made a claim of uniqueness about the Word only manifesting in flesh in him for their version of salvation by a sacrifice while at the same time professing that man is no more than a sinner. The process of ascension was known in antiquity but during the last 2000 years, mankind has been indoctrinated with a scenario written by some Roman emperors or their scribe Flavius Josephus who had studied Jewish history and the Messianic movement at Qumran. The Master Jesus also tells us that the Knights Templar were condemned as heretics because they rejected the story of crucifixion associated with an atonement for an original sin. The fact he was not crucified has been repeated to me in half a dozen dictations from him, other sources and Mother Mary's. Furthermore, the evidence provided in Beyond the Veil of the Lost Holy Grail indicates that the first Chaldean Church of Christ, founded by Joseph of Arimathea in Britain, in 37 AD, that was overthrown by the 7th century, was related to a concept of salvation by an integration of the Logos or Word, that was distorted by its Roman imposture and Emperor Constantine. In a dictation given to me and referring to Augustine of Hippo's systematic interpretation of scripture, the Master Jesus said, on the 22nd of December, 2016, that the idea of sin is taken from Genesis 3 in which the first man and woman, who are not even named, eat of the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil, but that what trees represent in that chapter was misunderstood. At the beginning of the Atlantean age, some mystery schools were created to teach the way of the ascension. The teachings of the Ascended Masters were represented symbolically as the Tree of Life. The idea of the metamorphosis of the human kingdom is dependent upon our integration of the Logos and Immanentism, or in other words, the existence of what Gnostics and Luke call the Spirit within. It is the monadic presence in Theosophy, the I Am presence in the Summit Lighthouse teachings, as well as the Higher Self or Souls in Reality, the Atman in the Upanishads, etc. These notions are at opposite pole to the Church of Rome's dogma, as despite the schism between East and West, and disconnection of the Protestant movement, that have occurred, these different Christian denominations follow the Council of Nicaea's deification of Jesus Christ and view that he was God on earth, with a claim of uniqueness in relation to the Word made flesh, a declaration that denotes ignorance about how the human nature can be transformed and one that explains how any being, could have acquired a divine nature. The emphasis in the dictations I have received is upon erroneous concepts, as well as the exegesis of Genesis 6, because it has been the subject of so much misinterpretation, and these lead to wrong ideas about the angelic realm which protects mankind from the forces of darkness. 
the archangels have used me to pass on these topics because my field of academic studies was theology and history. In Beyond the Veil of the Lost Holy Grail Unveiling the Ancient Faith Grail Ritual in the Church of Joseph of Arimathea founded AD 37, I expose the theology introduced at the Council of Nicaea, and provide a groundbreaking exegesis for Genesis 6 in which I oppose the fallen angel theory, or more exactly the assumption that the term Nephilim, which means fallen ones, alludes to the sons of God. This is the reason that some Christians proclaim the sons of God were fallen angels and have created a monstrous theology of genetic creation by fallen angels raping human women, disregarding the observations of scholars in academic theology for the last 200 years. Archangel Michael showed me what terms to use to define what was done in the exegesis, by dictating the following. The key to unravel the mystery of the sons of God of Genesis 6 is the contention that the term being Har Elohim, in the Masortic text, should be read as sons with an angelic nature. On the basis of ancient authors, they were self-born meaning without parents like Adam. They are revealed as initiators who descended among the Atlanteans and intermarried with their daughters. However, in their progeny incarnated enough fallen ones to create the downfall of the antediluvian world. The spirits of those Nephilim will not return as Antichrist, as Christians believe on the basis of a medieval misinterpretation of the Book of Revelation. In the Dead Sea Scrolls these fallen ones are referred to as the Sons of Darkness. They were believed to be incarnated in the Romans. They crushed the first century Church of Christ. The medieval misinterpretation is a reference to millennialism, and Antichrist will not appear in the future because these fallen entities have already started reincarnating among the other souls, that are in the image of the Father Mother God, some considerable time before Christ did. In his dictation of the 16th of July, 2016, Archangel Michael states, Fallen angels is just a term used by early theologians such as the Gnostic origin of Alexandria in the early centuries of Christianity, in about 250 AD, when they attempted to interpret the mysterious reference to the intermarriages between the sons of God and the daughters of man in Genesis 6. These theologians did not know the sons of God were initiators from the higher realms who had descended into the physical forms they had created by an act of will. This process was known in antiquity as being self-begotten. This meant that they had not incarnated, or had not been born from a woman. The theologians speculated this descent was a fall by lust and they were wrong as it was part of a genetic dispensation and they came as initiators to the Atlanteans. Mystery schools were created in those last days of the Lemurian period and their teachings were symbolized in Genesis as the Tree of Life, whereas what the black magicians of Atlantis professed was represented as the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil. In my opinion the fallen ones can be identified as the incarnation of the red dragon of the book of Revelation 1220, and only a few of these offspring were evil incarnations. In the majority, the progeny that was engendered in the intermarriages genetically were the Aryan or fifth root race, whereas the sons of God were of the third root race and the daughters of man were Atlantean and of the fourth root race. This is in accordance with the teachings of the Theosophical Society which, it is plain to see from some of her lectures and works, the messenger E.C. Prophet also adopted. However, some Christian denominations, as well as exegetes, believe that the sons of God were fallen angels. My view is that theologians were mistaken in their interpretation of a fall by lust, and the intermarriages mentioned in Genesis 6 can be identified as those of two root races from which emerged the fifth Aryan root race. I have identified the fact that the fallen angel theory was in full swing 2000 years ago and was eradicated by 200 AD which is the reason that the Book of Enoch was taken out of circulation. However, it was revived in modern times. In Forbidden Mysteries of Enoch, the messenger E.C. Prophet continues using the term fallen angels for the Nephilim instead of fallen ones or fallen progeny, but only in relation to the progeny of the sons of God. I don't mean this to be a criticism but it may have created the impression that she agreed with the Christian interpretation that the sons of God were fallen. I am not in agreement with the use of the term fallen angel as angels cannot fall.
The event referred to in Genesis 6 is not a fall by lust of angels, as that would be specifically pertinent to the human nature and what is clear from the other chapters of Genesis is that what occurred, before the flood, is a human fall in morality. No angel fell. As to the book of Enoch, I have provided some observations in from the words of angels and the ancient book of Chica. The error that becomes apparent where Judaism is concerned is the assumption that evil is genetic. A false genealogy may have been forged because of that presumption to place Enoch as the seventh from Adam instead of a descendant of Cain. This physical plane is a realm in which a choice for good and evil has to be made. This is related to the psyche and discernment, not linear descent, ancestors or genetics. Please note that, on the basis of the ancient testament's legacy, the Jewish mindset appears devoid of the understanding that human beings have a choice and that evil is not due to genealogy or genetics, or transmitted from generation to generation, but the product of incarnation and choice as souls have been given free will. Scriptures contain a lot of metaphors and allegories that must not be interpreted literally. The process of ascension, or resurrection, was known in antiquity, for instance in the esoteric schools in Alexandria, Egypt, where the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus were kept, and by the Druids, and perhaps in Tibet and by the Magi, and then it was hidden as the Roman Church, or Deep Church, concealed esoteric teachings. However, we need to realize this resurrection was in the sense of an ascension without death or cross. We know that souls are sent to mystery schools upon the etheric plane, and Andre, my ascended twin flame, has mentioned having done that in his very first dictation to me in 2015. But perhaps some Tibetan lamas achieved this resurrection or ascension, and for instance the master Chual Khal dictated a letter of introduction to Alice Bailey for her book A Treatise on Cosmic Fire in which he says he was a Tibetan in a physical body in a lama Zui in Tibet but working for the hierarchy with the master Kuthumi and El Moria. He had attained a certain degree of initiation and if he had reached the sixth, he had ascended but had chosen to remain in his physical body to continue his work. We also know that Saint Germain was called the man who never dies because he reappeared after his life as the Count of Saint Germain, and there are some testimonies for that. What happens when we actually ascend at that initiation which is the sixth, was described by the messenger E.C. Prophet, as well as Joshua D. Stone. At the fifth initiation we go through a spiritual ascension in preparation for the sixth, as it takes time for the body to change to reflect that spiritual ascension. In other words, at the fifth initiation we can have reached the level required for the actual ascension, but only in consciousness, and it takes time for the body to be healed and modified. We have been informed about changes in our chakras and DNA, and that we were being fitted with the garment of ascension which is said to be solar and weaved by the angels. What Joshua states about the fifth initiation in his Manual of Ascension published in 1999, totally explains what was happening around 2015 when so many channelers were claiming an ascension was taking place in three waves. Speaking of portals we were going through, and this was just for the audience of the channeled messages, not the whole world which is not yet on the path of initiations and ascension. The difficulty has always been that people had to transmute 100% of their karma to achieve what the Master Jesus demonstrated by his resurrection. A few decades ago, Saint Germain obtained a dispensation that allows for an ascension following a transmutation of but 51% of our karma. It may be the reason that ascension from the physical body, while alive, became possible recently. The dictations that I received informed me about this at an early stage of the communication. It starts with healing and natural rejuvenation. The end result should be the recovery of longevity as it was before the reset after the flood. An awakening is first required for the process, and the forces of the light activated the third eye chakra of waves of people, in 2015, with a cosmic merkaba that was compared to a stargate, and an irradiation of photonic light, in my early videos published by Matt McElroy. So, there is a new emphasis in the teachings that I have obtained from 2015 
though they tie in with Saint Germain's plan for a golden age and those of the Master Chualpal's concept of the Fifth Kingdom given through Bailey during the period of 1919 to 49. My Ascended Twin Flame, Andre, commented on the 23rd of December, 2014. Yes, there are different aspects of ascension. There is the slow rise as a process to a higher dimension in which density and reality change slowly, and there is the ascension that is the final stage in which there is reintegration into the higher self. But there is an ascension which corresponds to the change in the state of the soul that goes through the lives and incarnation. The process of ascension can consist in the reunion with Christ consciousness at the higher level. There is a difference where the term ascension is concerned. It can be used in the sense of, ascension to heaven. For this reintegration it is with the Christ self but not the higher self. The real self is the higher soul at the etheric level, whereas the Christ self contains the image that is to be reflected. On the 20th of January, 2015 in his project of reunion, Andre said. It is not for the ascension that you have been given a training. It's for entry into the ranks of the Great White Brotherhood, as you have been told. One does not automatically enter it through the ascension. Reunion with the higher self does not yet take place after the ascension. The ascension is a slow rise towards a higher dimension. You will change, if you don't die. It is the plan. You will first acquire some psychic powers due to a change at the level of the DNA and chakras that permits telepathy, and even communication at great distances outside the solar system. At the same time as the reunion of twin flames is to take place, the descent of the galactic beings and initiators will descend among us just as those whom ancient authors said were self-born. It is in the tradition of the messiahs that this will occur. An oblivion of this concept occurred over the course of centuries in Judaism. They lost the knowledge that initiators return and that the hierarchies of astrological ages descend, assume a form, by incarnation or other means, and accomplish certain tasks to herald a new age. Andre expanded on this saying. The masters will walk side by side with you, or among you all. It is the prophecy. There is such a prophecy for Jesus, for Arthur, and even for the king of Agartha, Sanat Kumara. It is because the forces from Sirius and of the light took refuge under some mountains, some protective force fields, and in the underworld of Shangri-La, Shambhala, Agartha, Thuli etc. You know the legends that are related to the coming age. As you know, during the Atlantean era the initiators appeared with some bodies that they created and they had some children who inherited powers from those divine fathers, the Baini Ha Elohim, the term for sons of God, and some among them misused them. And as the Master Chul Kool stated it, those powers appeared prematurely. The ascension was supposed to take place by people following the teachings of the mystery schools of paradise, that were symbolized by the tree of life. You heard it say that some masters such as Saint Germain came on earth by creating a body in this manner. The master Chualkhal is known as the Tibetan and his name is spelled as D-J-W-H-A-L-K-H-U-L. See Alice Bailey's work A Treatise on Cosmic Fire. The Summit Lighthouse has published some teachings received from this master but have removed the letter H in his name. However, let's continue, Christians only believe in Christ's return due to a statement in relation to the Son of Man in scripture that was tampered with and originally referred to the manifestation of the Aquarian Age. The astrological sign for Aquarius is pictographically represented by a man holding a jar, and I suggest that what comes out of it is not water but emanations from the rays. The end of days is but that of the age of Pisces, but people lost that understanding even in antiquity. Saint Germain is the son of man because the man is the symbol for the sign of Aquarius, and he is the hierarch of the seventh age, or Aquarius, and stands for freedom. It's been like an intense game of chess between the forces of the light and those of the dark in recent years. On the 7th of September, 2015, Archangel Michael revealed that they have withheld technology from mankind and have carried out impostures of channeled communication, so beware the secret technology that is human. There are entities, mainly in the Cabal who, with the use of technology, now carry out an impost tour of the Ascended Masters, the Archangels, as well as Ashta Command. It is a technology for telepathic communication that permits them to spy on the mental activities of people, and in relation to the matters relating to surveillance. This technology still remains to be exposed. To a person who is trained to receive telepathic communication, and is protected during this training period, there are distinctive signs, particularities, 
signatures of energies, and that make it possible for them to know within a few seconds if the message is real or a masquerade. The messenger, or channeler, can also sense an energy that is a signature. The dark forces have attempted to lead the light workers astray by the dissemination of concepts designed to make them think that the forces of darkness were no more a threat to their spirituality, or to the world. But it's obvious from the world scenes that are presented on your TV screens that they are still at work even if it is in a last desperate attempt to cause chaos. I am Archangel Michael. I am with you all, protecting you always. The message received between 2015 and 2023 has also been that the Dark Ones have played their cards but in this game are not winning, that plasma craft have deactivated missiles and neutralized radioactivity from nuclear accidents, as well as purified the atmosphere and ionosphere from chemtrails, and that some leaders of the nations have changed their rhetoric as a result of an activation of their discernment by the Cosmic Merkaba, or Stargate of Ascension. Archangel Michael has confirmed in dictations that were published on videos that we had been in a photon belt from the 1st of January, 1996 and penetrated this stargate on the 21st of December, 2012. He explained. This stargate is a means of activation and acceleration, the mirror effect of which is noticeable upon the world scene. You are entering an intense phase of disclosure concerning the truths that have been suppressed for hundreds of years. Many of the dark rulers have been removed. At what stage can we expect an intervention from the galactic beings, or the event that will be the equivalent of the Christian second coming? Mankind has to reach a certain level of awakening and certain false beliefs have to be eradicated, for instance the one that Archangel Michael explains in my channel Ascension video with the title of If We Appear. Unfortunately, the forces of the light can't intervene if the majority of people reject them because they have been indoctrinated in believing they are demons, and don't understand that there exists a human secret technology obtained by reverse engineering. Not to be confused with that which originates from the higher dimensions. An intervention, as in the sense of the light brigade of the channel Alcyon Pleiades videos, and its landing cannot take place until more people have changed their viewpoint and realized that what is being said on their TV is what certain powers want them to believe. The Archangels are working on people's perception and the eradication of false beliefs. The Dark Ones also have free will and yet their agenda is going against God's divine plan, and they have sabotaged the process of ascension before, during the Atlantean era. In an early dictation the Master Jesus mentions a plan to shift to the fifth dimension all of the physical plane, so we are out of reach from the dark forces and their abominations, with their agenda of transhumanism for instance. So, we are constantly progressing towards higher consciousness and there are physical changes as a result of that. There also is Saint Germain's plan of a golden age which he is working on with Lord El Moria, who, according to the Summit Lighthouse, was King Arthur, and Saint Germain has also mentioned this to me in his dictations. The apocalypse means coming out of hiding therefore revelation. On the 23rd of March, 2023, Archangel Uriel gave me a dictation which I took in writing word for word, and this is what he stated. The forces of the light are presently at work, including the Master Jesus, to put obstacles in what the dark forces are trying to achieve. When this work is done as the apocalypse, or work of revelation, the population will be in shock, as previously prophesied, and awakened to the presence of evil that was hidden to them while they were living in the comfort of materialism, which was a pact with the devil that would end with transhumanism and the horrors of the elimination of genders, and much more. The first step for this abomination, since you were created in the dual polarity image of the Father Mother God and reflect the etheric blueprint to create in the world of matter a timeline, was the religious insinuation that a mortal sin was committed by mankind and that it necessitated a son of God to die on a cross to pay for that sin, for each soul, and redeem you. But a redemption was not necessary as it is a matter of choice to follow the path of righteousness. That original sin was insinuated to have been in connection with the fruit of the forbidden tree of knowledge of good and evil, and shortly after that episode in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve are depicted in Genesis as engendering a progeny. What that religious indoctrination has subtly been insinuating is, therefore, that populating the world is a sin. This was the dark version of the evil pyramid of control that has an agenda of depopulation. They falsified the Christian doctrine as these concepts did not exist in the first place, but were introduced a little at a time by the councils of the Roman Church in various centuries, 
the first one of which was that of Nicaea in 325 AD, when the doctrine of sacrifice, or vicarious atonement, was introduced by Emperor Constantine in the process of Christ's deification. The dark agenda of control was spanned over these centuries as a form of indoctrination which forked at one time when science separated from religion. But it was soon modified from a true search based upon observation into a matrix to shape the world into one devoid of the influence from the higher dimensions. It is not acceptable and the whole plan was intended to sabotage the ascension and manifestation of the fifth kingdom prophesied by the master Chul Cool through Alice Bailey. It is important to realize it is related to an attempt to prevent the metamorphosis of man into a higher being of light. The forces of darkness are threatened by this project because light consumes darkness, or evil. It means they will be abolished. They already are at the point of being so, and the souls of light are being victorious in their reactions, as what is taking place is a test to their spiritual metal. So may you be reassured that all is progressing according to plan. And I will leave it to that. This was Archangel Uriel at your service. Archangel Uriel also stated the following. A great event is to happen in this age of Aquarius. It is the coming of galactic beings who have been assigned a mission by the authorities that govern the so-called solar system. In reality, these authorities are the spiritual hierarchy of a multidimensional system with the High Council and Federation of Light that submit to the Divine Will or Logos. These galactic beings will gain recognition as ambassadors and teachers, just as in the antediluvian era, when they manifested as initiators by the method of being self-born, to assist mankind to further shift in a state of liberation from erroneous perceptions to create a good timeline and eventually shift, upon the higher level of dimensions, not just in consciousness but also the physical body, for a liberation from evil and to regain the longevity, as well as the conditions of a lost paradise, the place from which the polar ions of a first civilization descended. Theorists ignore that it was by dropping from a higher dimension that this occurred. The world is presently in turmoil, but is being prepared for that time of more stability when the teachers of galactic origin will be present in a more open manner. The present time is that of an apocalypse. The term is often read in the sense of a tribulation but calypso is a verb in Greek that means to hide. With oppo it has the sense of, coming out of hiding, hence revelation. This is a time of disclosure when there is opportunity to gain knowledge about what has been suppressed, because of the freedom that Aquarius stands for. All the bases of dictatorship and political deceptions, as well as means of control of mind for power, are being overturned by the strategical moves of the archangels working behind the scenes and through the light workers, and many good people in the world, as well as in the media that is going through a renaissance to be what it should be, instead of being a tool for the force in power at any particular time. I have given you food for thought. Take confidence from this, as it is not over yet. There are had times on the horizon, not for too long though, but take heart, do not lose hope as great progress has been achieved, and better times are ahead. With love, Archangel Uriel at your service. Christine Preston's Contact Details We have listed additional information of books and videos that are available.